stepwise therapy, right? So first, the step therapy for treatment of asthma, this is for age 12 plus, which is modified for GINA, right? So GINA is the one which is been given by the World Health Organization. Whereas your NAEPP, which is National Asthma Education and Prevention Program, is the guideline by the United States. Now, these are the guidelines. So, you need to address, first and foremost, the exposures and as well as comorbidities, which is very, very important. Then you need to confirm the inhaler technique and optimize the adherence. Then followed by that, you need to move up or down steps based on the control. So, in this, like we have four things. One is, what is the regular therapy? Is it preferred or not? What is the alternative regular therapy? Then what is the adjunctive therapy? Then what is the reliever therapy as needed? Right? As needed reliever therapy. So if you take in patients with step 1, they don't require any regular therapy. They don't require any alternative therapy. They require only just as needed reliever therapy. That includes the inhaled corticosteroids. Right? Or the LABA, that is Formetrol, or the short-acting beta agonist, that is Salbutamol or Terbitaline. So, only reliever therapy is required in step 1. Whereas in step 2, usually they don't prefer for the regular therapy, right? Or you can add low-dose inhaled corticosteroids. The alternative therapy will be leukotriene receptor antagonist. And if you take the reliever therapy, Yes, reliever therapy is required whenever there is like exacerbations that is inhaled corticosteroids or the Farmetrol, right? Or concomitant inhaled corticosteroids and short-acting beta agonists should be added. So this will be your step 2 therapy. That is reliever therapy in step 2. Whereas in step 3, they will be requiring low-dose inhaled corticosteroids or the Farmetrol should be given. And the alternative therapy will be medium dose inhaled corticosteroids. The adjunctive therapy will be long acting muscarinic antagonist. Right? Long acting muscarinic antagonist. And reliever therapy, the inhaled corticosteroids or pharmatrol in low dose should be given. That is in step, th step 3. Whereas in step 4, you need to increase the dosage of the inhaled corticosteroids. That is, the medium dose inhaled corticosteroids are required. And the alternative regular therapy will be high dose inhaled corticosteroids. That is alternative regular therapy. Otherwise, the regular therapy is only moderate dose inhaled corticosteroids. Right? And adjunctive therapy is the same like what I have discussed for step 3. Step 5, here we need to increase the dose of the inhaled corticosteroids. So basically, in all of these, what is the very important is the intensification of the inhaled corticosteroid therapy is what I have discussed in the beginning also. Right? Or... Long-acting beta agonist plus add-on long-acting muscarinic antagonist. And in step 5, the alternative therapies will be new molecules that is omalizumab that is anti-IgE or mepolizumab. So that is anti-interleukin 5 or anti-interleukin 4 R alpha are being added. And the adjunctive therapy will be similar to that of step 3 and as well as step 4. Whereas in step 6, in step 6, the inhaled corticosteroids, they're not working here. In step 6, the regular therapy itself is anti-IgE or anti-interleukin-5 or anti-interleukin-4 or alpha, right? And the alternative regular therapy, see this is the preferred regular therapy. The alternative regular therapy will be the oral corticosteroids, okay? So that is about stepwise treatment in patients with the bronchial asthma, right? Now, so let me just cut this particular or let me just dissect this stepwise treatment and then we'll discuss in detail. So, you take in patients with the milder asthma, evidence support that use of as needed inhaled corticosteroids, right? So, instead of, right? So, instead of regular inhaled corticosteroids, Instead of regular inhaled corticosteroids, we give as needed the inhaled corticosteroids. Okay. And that is in case of milder asthma. That is what I have said you. And combination of the inhaled corticosteroids or Farmetrol, which is a long-acting beta agonist. This, we have two long-acting beta agonists, Farmetrol and Sarmetrol. Right. 
between this formetrol and salmetrol, the one which is having rapid onset of action is for formetrol. So this particular combination that is being studied as a single agent in multiple scenarios. What are those scenarios? That is, in patients with more severe asthma, right? So in patients with more severe asthma, that is one scenario. And also in patients with, right? So also in patients with milder asthma without background therapy, right? So mild, milder asthma without background therapy. That means they have not taken any particular treatment previously, but they have an acute exacerbation. So the combination can be given. But definitely in more severe asthma, this combination is being advised. Okay. So this particular combination that is inhaled corticosteroids and as well as the pharmatrol, this can be given twice daily. Right. Now, you take the GINA guidelines. So according to the GINA guidelines, like what all we have, we have four things. Preferred regular therapy, alternative regular therapy, adjunctive therapy, then as needed, that is your reliever therapy, right? As needed, which is nothing but the reliever therapy. So what GINA recommends is, GINA recommends the use of inhaled corticosteroids or formatrol as the reliever medication in all the steps of the asthma CVRT. So in all the steps of the asthma CVRT, the, you, the inhaled corticosteroids or the formatrol is being used as the reliever medications. Okay, including step one, right? Including intermittent asthma, that is step one, you need to give the inhaled corticosteroids or formatrol as the reliever medications. Okay, so these are being used mainly to address the potential risk of asthma mortality. So, what these drugs will do basically, they will reduce the risk of right they will reduce the risk of the asthma mortality even in mild cases right so even in mild cases these drugs have to be used and you take particularly in step 3 and as well as the step 4 what the guideline says so any epp that is national asthma education and prevention program guideline suggest the inhaled corticosteroids or formatrol as the reliever medications for patients requiring step 3 and as well as the step 4. What GINA guidelines were telling? GINA guidelines were telling this inhaled corticosteroids and pharmatrol are used as the reliever medications in all steps of asthma including step 1. But the NAEPP guidelines is only in step 3 and step 4 you use this particular inhaled corticosteroids or pharmatrol as the reliever medications. Okay. And the NAEPP guidelines is please use as needed concomitant inhaled corticosteroids and as well as short acting beta agonist in case of step 2. Okay. So step 3 and as well as step 4, right? The inhaled corticosteroids or formatrol are used as the reliever medications. But whereas in step 2, the concomitant inhaled corticosteroids and short acting beta agonist can be used, right? And the next important group of drugs are the leukotriene receptor antagonist. The leukotriene receptor antagonists, they can be considered as the alternative medication in step 2, right? So, in step 2, these leukotriene receptor antagonists, they are used as, right, they are used as the alternative medication for those concerned about the minimal side effects of the inhaled corticosteroids, okay? So, those individuals who are like very much worried about the adverse effects, right? So, those individuals who are worried about the minimal side effects of the inhaled corticosteroids in them, the leukotriene receptor antagonist can be considered, right? But the recent warnings have said about this, the adverse effects of the leukotriene receptor antagonist as suicidal ideation. Suicidal ideation associated with Montelukast has been observed. That you need to take care regarding the Montelukast. Then, we have the leukotriene modifiers and long-acting anticholinergic drugs. This leukotriene modifiers and long-acting anticholinergic drugs, they can be used as adjunctive therapies, right? They are being used as the adjunctive therapies in patients requiring 
step four and the step five trait that is about the role of the leukotriene modifiers and long acting anti cholinergic drugs then we have the biologics right the biologics which are highly effective in specific endotypes okay that is mainly in individuals with right mainly in individuals with type 2 inflammation so in them we need to use the biologics okay so these particular biologics they are currently reserved for step 5 therapy right mainly for step 5 therapy right or beyond step 5 and as well as step 6 okay why due to their high cost what are these biologics these particular biologics they include the omalizumab right then interleukin 5 then interleukin 4 antagonist they are your biologics right so that is about the guidelines which are being given by the gene 